So I've talked about it before, how a lot of these older organizations on the north side started, and a lot has to do with a lot of the Puerto Rican community moving into Chicago. By the 1950s, it started to see a big toll of Puerto Ricans coming in to the north side of Chicago. By the 1960s, it tripled, but still the outnumbered, they had to come together and fight. Let's get into this video. In a city known for its fearsome super gangs, criminal enterprise like the mob, gangs, Chicago has its own culture from graffiti on the walls to how the south side and the north side are separated. In Chicago, it's where you're born that defines who you are, not your race. This is gang life. <laughs> Cartel got me working for the big faces Federally got my car full of brick cases Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking Eyes picked to my back for my shoelaces Got out, should've seen the look on they faces All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper Set up by the crew, they done put a banger In the trunk of my car and left me to hang there No thing, then attorney went and beat the case Got a job digging holes for minimum wage Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing Quit the drugs, but you know I went back to selling Six times failing, I went back to prison Got my head right, got my bread right Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe Trying to do right, I got a mission Trying to give back to my boys in the prison The old me's gone, I ain't never gonna miss them From wrong to strong, stay true to the vision From wrong to, to strong From wrong to strong from wrong to, to strong From wrong to strong What's up guys? My name is JC I am Wrong to Strong If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, mi pandilla, you already know Suerte a la suburban Let's get this episode going. Welcome to another episode of Gang Life, Chicago edition. <laughs> it's the only edition we have. <laughs> Today, we're gonna talk about a Puerto Rican organization that formed in the early 1960s. The physical geography of a city that was very different from what they had left behind in Puerto Rico. I remember my mother talking about what she thought Chicago was. She described Chicago as, uh, or the United States, as this place with all these pretty gingerbread-like houses. People didn't know Puerto Ricans. People didn't know that Puerto Rico was part of the United States. We were a foreign culture with American citizenship. They were called the Guardians of the Streets. Yes, we are talking about the almighty Latin Eagles. They rose pretty much, there was a big Puerto Rican civil rights movement going on around that time in the early 1960s. They were, like I said, they were moving in and they were getting treated really, really bad, really bad. Um, Chicago has been like a big, tag your it you know by by race pretty much and everybody's had their moment the puerto ricans i must say it was it was a very very bad time to be brown around those years but neighborhoods where there were puerto ricans uh small barrios like on the south side uh in uptown and lakeview uh lincoln park became a, a primary barrio it was nothing but Puerto Rican shams, Puerto Rican people. I mean, there were other Latinos living there, but the, the largest presence of people there were Puerto Ricans. The main reason for us moving all the time and having to transfer from one school to another was an increase in the rent. They had to settle for no wage, informal service economy work that th did not pay the wages. A couple of brothers came together, one of them being uh, Cha Cha. Jimenez and uh, the Young Lord started an organization, but they were really tight with the Latin Eagles. These were, like I said, troubled times for brown people in Chicago. The Latin Eagles were called the guardians of the streets because they protected their neighborhood and 
Um, you know, I'm just gonna call it how it is. They did the dirty work that the young lords couldn't do because the young lords were actually on the spotlight 24 seven. You know, it's like uh, being a politician. You could only kiss babies and shake hands. <laughs> <laughs> by by 1970 they were letting white and black members come into the Eagles 1978 the Latin Eagles were invited into the Folks Alliance the Latin Eagles had many many friends until about the 1980s and I've said it before this happens for many many reasons you know um, whether it's I mean, we, we know that a lot of the wars started with the Lang Kings because they were a very popular gang. They were they were big. They were everywhere. So you know, parties were thrown, and and a lot of these wars happened like that. There was parties that were you know being held at, at halls and stuff, and these members would show up with their jackets and colors, and a lot of testosterone going on. A lot of tough shit. You know, a lot of. Uh, you know being a, a man has been around for a very long time and the testosterone levels have always been high and somewhere somehow if it's not over a girl it's over an argument and, and something happens and all out war breaks out someone gets killed and guess what it's something that's carried on throughout the years right now there's a lot of organizations that their their peewees or their kids that are banging nowadays these millenniums don't even know why they went to war with some of these organizations don't even know how it started don't even know i don't even think they didn't even know their fucking tabla but it is what it is obviously some of their hoods have been lost because of the change that's happening in chicago Everybody knows what what's happening right now in Chicago. There's a lot of uh, hipsters coming back. It's a new time. It's a new time, a new era, millenniums. It's it's a different time to gangbang. Different time to sit behind a computer. I call it the immediate gratification times. It is just. I was actually talking to one of the older members today from the uh, Latin Eagles, and I was telling him, you know. These kids, we live in a different time. This is why like our 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 time has passed. Like, you know how we we it was different. And we're never going to get those times again. So, when you hear me say, you know, in my time, uh, you know, there was rules, regulations, there was there was, you know, there was this, there was that. I don't mean no disrespect to none of the young cats at all. It is all love. It is all love. What I mean is that I just lived in different times. I know that you guys live in different times now and it is what it is. You're going to bang how you bang because this is what you know. This is how you grew up and we live in different times. Like I said, I didn't have a phone that I could get everything I wanted at quick seconds when I was a kid. Who knows how I would have grown up if it would have been like that. So I don't judge nobody. I don't talk shit about nobody. And like I always tell people, cause I'll get comments and be like, well, you got it wrong, you got this. I'm not highlighting no murders. I'm not highlighting, like when I when I talk about organizations, I, I highlight them so they're not forgotten. There's a lot of organizations have been extinct from Chicago that will be highlighted that you guys will be like, damn, I didn't even know they existed. So yeah, there's there's a lot of lot of organizations that at one time, a lot of these organizations weren't gangs. They weren't. They actually were like boys and girl clubs. And this is one thing about the Land Eagles that must be said. Their legacy cannot be forgotten as what they did at one time to help the Puerto Rican community in their area. Back then, a lot of these organizations, that is what they did. They took care of their people. They took care of their neighborhood. The Land Kings did it. The Eagles did it. A lot of these organizations did it. Something led to transform it into a gang and it happened. Shit happens. You know, we live in a world where you know, there's a lot of bad people, there's a lot of bad things that happen, but it doesn't mean that you have to follow suit. 
You can lead by example, you can change things. A lot of people don't think that one person can change things. One person can change a lot of things and that is leading by example, walking the walk, talking the talk. Hey, it is what it is. My name is JC, I am Ron Strong. Don't judge nobody, stay in your lane, live savage and remember, you only have one life to live. Live it out here, outside of prison, not game banging, stay sober, hey. And don't catch the fucking corona, because it is a motherfucking bitch. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.